North Bengal to give some talk in, on some topics. Professor Rao was had the right, I had the duty. So there was Bengali and uh, he would speak in English, I would speak in Bengali, Hindi and translate it. Uh, that went on for six and a half hours. The way we are going today, I hope we can curtail it much, much less than that. There is a lot written here, so I will try speed up. I will request, uh, yeah, uh, to, to summarize it, because it is going to be a breakfast for all of us. So, uh, Professor Aris Rao is, uh, takes off from 1848 from the manifesto of the Congress Party. That's where he begins. And uh, having begun, he writes in, uh, uh, writes in two perspectives. And I wish to just read that out to you all because he makes some very fundamental points uh, from which I have taken off this particular paper based on that. He says, productive forces and property relations have their own history of evolution. In the domain of productive forces, evolution can be seen in historical sequencing such as old stone age, new stone age, metal age, mechanical revolution, chemical revolution, electronic revolution, etc. is defined. Property relations can also be seen in a sequence as early commune, feudal, capitalist, socialist ages, etc. But the superstructure does not have its own history. All its history deals with culture, arts, human rights, etc. All these are to be seen in the context of history of productive forces and property relations existing at that time only and superstructural aspects does not have a history of its own. These are very uh, crucial points that he is making that you can locate the history in the development of productive forces, defined stages in the development of property relations in defined stages. And all superstructural matters align themselves appropriately. So to that extent, if you are talking about certain human rights, it exists in, in slave society also. It only excludes slaves. Uh, in a class society, requirements of one may harm the other. Due to this, there will be struggle between two sections or two aspects which rests in the three domains. Now he introduces the three domains the bourgeois democratic revolution essentially established state civil society. He is introducing, which is human rights and civil liberty, civil rights. He introduces three dimensions. If the struggle occurs in the superstructural elements relating to tradition and culture, then it becomes the field of action of civil rights. In this domain, civil rights violation is seen in the form that conditions the intellectual capacities of human beings, example, dowry deaths. We will explain further. Then he goes on to say, part, second part, if the struggle occurs in the domain of property relations, then it becomes a field of action of democratic rights. Violation of democratic rights is seen in the form that controls the physical labor of human beings, example, privatization, attack on workers' strike, and lockout. Please pay attention to these three very interesting examples he gives. Because privatization is denying the right of ownership of the means of production. Attack on workers' strike is a right they had to strike, but it is attacked. And lockout is the right denied to work. So he brings these points out in three casual terms, but it has a depth of meaning. If the struggle occurs, point three, in the domain of productive forces, then it becomes the field of action of human rights. Violation of human rights is seen in the form that controls the access to resources. I think you were alluding to this point also in, uh, in what you were saying. So the control that, acts, that controls the access to resources is a violation of human rights. The operation here, he says, is most cruel. And he says, example, the attack on Dalits. He further goes on to write. For a human being utilizing its physical labor and mental powers to struggle against nature, we define human beings having the capability of doing this, therefore they are human. To struggle against nature which facilitates their survival is a fundamental right. 
right to life is fundamental. This right, a highly exclaimable and highly superior right, is inalienable and indivisible. All the rights incorporated in the Constitution as primary rights are derived from the right to live. All these derived rights are divisible and inalienable. So that fundamental fund right to life is the life from which all other de rights are derived is noted. The term human rights, when viewed through different perspectives, gives two different meanings. And we have touched upon it briefly. In the capitalist perspective, it is believed that there are some naturally given rights. In the process of the Bhujar Kamakya revolutions, there is this naturally given rights which help the individual to live like a human being. So in this perspective, the bourgeois democratic perspective, freedom to express your ideas, the freedom to speak out is an anti-human space, it's, it's a bourgeois democratic freedom. You can speak, you can vote, you can you are mobile. The freedom to form associations, you cannot have production without an association, the collective, the largest collective, were brought to the front. All these rights that help develop the market he takes leaps when he's talking. Basically, all these, if you thread together, it's developing a market, are a great step forward when compared to feudal order. All these rights are useful to the market formations. But we should not forget the fact that all these rights strengthen the right to accumulate property, which in fact is a bourgeois right. So it's beginning to distinguish the rights as they emerge. From whose perspective are you seeing? Then he counters, he says, as Marxists, how should we view human rights? The rights that are necessary for one individual to live like a human being, not the right given to you that you can speak, that you have a freedom to speak, therefore you are a human right. You can vote, therefore you are, you are human. You can be mobile, therefore you are human. No. It is the right of the individual, therefore as Marxists, how should we? The rights that are necessary for one individual to live like a human being can be termed as human rights. In capitalist perspective, rights define the human being. But in the Marxist perspective, it is only the human being who defines the rights. This is a huge departure from the bourgeois democratic understanding of rights, which Aris Rao is making in this paper. The human being also redefines the human rights in case it becomes necessary. I'll give this short one to you, sir. Modata Hakula Puttuka Perudala, Sentry of Pitarata, RS Rogaru, Kanaka Tombay Yedu, Rurasa, Hakuru Rindu Rupada, Ru Pradanaka in the Peru, Adi, Panka Pavich and Pretty Jesna, RS Rogaru, Communist Party Pranagaro, Mark Sengels, Hakula Gurinchi, Jesna Sutri Kanaka Paraminchi, Dana Gutiesa. Akara, I am Pradanaka Jepindi. Uppati sector ko cherry crop nadi, patarati gom, patarati gom, raw hay gom, yantra gom, rasayan ko gom, electronic ko gom, itla hundi. Atla ke aste samandar ko ko cherry crop hundi. Aaj ma communism, banis samajam, us samay samajam, bitbar dhani samajam. Kani upari tarani ko cherry crop le. Upari taranlo aniye kamsal nai. Yi kamsal ko itu anti ko ko dramaanu ko tarani cherry crop le. Hakul gula baat lo baagne. I think it can happen just for a good year for Muntai, who's of the Jasmine, Samajan Lona. Uparitan Lo, the Rigay, four at a low, four at a Samaniti, all the Hopu, civil rights are in time. Pura Aranaku, Parakatam, Chatalo, Idi, Nera Manukundi, Gandhi, four at a two. Ask the Samandalo, four at a two, and they have to know some major sum for the Lago with the four at a it went to Sandra Ballo, privatization with Rick Hopper Artham, Ikara, Raja Samika, who was tiny. Even Akunda, but the sector on a Paradigm of Puru, Nanki, Arisoga, Sugarana, Yana, the Delita, the Litra, but like the Delta, the Insect, the Paradigm, but the sector, Ludic Saman in Japoratam, Ikara, Mara, who was tiny, and he moved Arisoga very much. I think any image of Pinapati, Pladi, very much in a particular. Chivinche Hapuninche, Nigel and Apurani, Pora of Purana, Prajasamaka Purana, Mana of Purana, Sai. Even me and the Japanese, 
ఊర్జ్వ ప్రజాస్వామ్యంలో మనం మరిచిపోకూడని అంశం ఏమంటే ఊర్జ్వ ప్రజాస్వామ్యంలో ఉన్న హక్కులన్నీ కూడా ఆస్తిని పెంచుకోవడానికి ఆస్తి సంచయనానికి ఉపయోగపడే బలపరిచే హక్కులే తప్ప మనకు హక్కులు కావు అంటే ఇవన్నీ కూడా ఊర్జ్వ ప్రజాస్వామ్య సమాజంలో ఉండేవన్నీ కూడా ఊర్జ్వ హక్కులు మాత్రమే అందువల్ల అసలు హక్కుల గురించి మౌలిక దృక్పథానికి వెళ్ళి పెట్టుబడిదారి దృక్పథంలో హక్కులను బట్టి మనిషి నిర్ణయిస్తారు మనిషి నిర్వహిస్తారు మార్చిస్ట్ దృక్పథంలో మనిషిని బట్టి హక్కులను నిర్వహిస్తారు ఇది ప్రధానమైన మనిషిని బట్టి హక్కులను నిర్వచించడం మాత్రమే కాదు పునర్నిర్వచనాలు కూడా జరుగుతుంటాయి సమాజాన్ని బట్టి సమాజంలో మనిషి స్థానాన్ని బట్టి ఆ హక్కుల పునర్వచన జరుగుతుంది అనే మౌలిక భావనలను ఆర్ఎస్ఓగారు ఆ వ్యాసంలో వ్యక్తం చేశారు అదే ఇవాళ దాన్ని ఇంకా వేరు వేరు రంగాలకు పత్రంలో అయితే ఓ రక్షణ వరకు అనేక అంశాలు కాంగ్రెస్ ప్రస్తావించున్నారు వీటిని ఎట్లా అర్థం చేసుకోవాలి ఆర్ఎస్ఓ గారు చేసిన ఈ మౌలిక ప్రతిపాదనలు ఆధునిక సమాజానికి ఇవాటి వరకు ఎట్లా అన్వయిస్తాయి ఆయన తర్వాత బాగా